For radio music burglar alarm, you will need an AM radio, and make sure you tune it to a, an area on the AM band where there are no stations being broadcasted. And then you'll turn on the slide switch, and you can hear music on the radio. And then you would place a jumper wire between these two points on the circuit and then if a burglar was to cut or remove this wire the alarm would sound ideally you would use a longer wire or connect a uh, string to this jumper wire and there you have it for light dimmer when I push the press switch the red LED does not come on right away, and that's because the C4 capacitor has to charge first, and then once it charges, the charging current decreases, and input current to the PMP transistor increases, allowing the LED to gradually brighten, although it came on, still came on fairly fast. Releasing the press switch allows the capacitor to discharge, sending the input current to the transistor. Now, it's going to take a while for the LED to turn off completely, so I'm not going to record it. But, you can push and hold down the press switch again to bring the brightness back up to recharge the C4 capacitor. For motion detector, I set the lever on the RV resistor to... The halfway point and then when I wave my hand over the photo resistor the light the red LED flickers on and off when I cover the photo resistor resistance increases turning off the light and then when I uncover it the LED turns back on as electrical resistance decreases the MPN transistor is used to help operate this circuit. This project is going to explain how light can be modulated like radio signals. I cut out a white circle from a piece of paper and then made a triangle in it and then when I push and release the press switch when there is adequate light shining on the photoresistor you're going to see how the uh, lamp lights, and then, depending on lighting conditions, the LED will flicker as the fan spins. And whenever the triangle is over the photoresistor, the light will turn off. But it, this process happens so fast since the fan is spinning at a high rate of speed. And again, modulation occurs in AM or FM radio, and it uses one signal to modify the amplitude or frequency of another signal. So it can be very difficult to understand, but that's okay. This is just for demonstration purposes. This is the 1.5 to 30 hertz oscillator. When I turn on the slide switch, the LED blinks once every two seconds which is a frequency of 0 0.5 hertz and the adjustable resistor is currently on its lowest setting but as i gradually move the lever up the led flashes at a quicker rate and then at its highest setting the led is flashing so fast that it looks like it's on all the time and I have it about halfway. You could say that it's probably like somewhere between 16, 17 hertz. For sound pulse oscillator, I put the speaker right over the LED. And now you'll be able to hear the speaker. clicking as the LED flashes. 
and then the clicking increases as I move the adjustable resistor up. This is what it sounds like at its highest setting. And the LED is no longer on. I'm going to turn on the slide switch, and because the adjustable resistor is at its highest setting, the red LED is at full brightness. I'm going to then move the lever on the RV down until the LED goes out, then move it up slightly so that the LED is on, but very dim. Then I'm going to wave my hand over the photoresistor, and the LED will flash. If I cover the photoresistor completely, the LED goes out and the amount of light that the photoresistor receives affects the current flow to the base of the MPN transistor, which acts like a switch. And without light, the photoresistor cannot supply what is called base current to the transistor and therefore the LED cannot light. For motor rotation, I am going to push the press switch and the fan will spin clockwise. However, when I turn on the slide switch, the fan spins counterclockwise. What determines the direction in which the fan rotates is how the motor is connected relative to the polarities of the batteries. When the positive side of the battery is connected to the positive side of the motor, it's going to rotate clockwise. Then connecting the negative sides of the battery holder and fan and motor will make it rotate counterclockwise. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and note that the adjustable resistor is on its highest setting. Then I am going to push and release the press switch. The motor and fan spin and gradually come to a complete stop. When I push the press switch, the C4 capacitor charged with energy and when the switch was released, the energy discharged from the capacitor to power the fan and motor. Now, the adjustable resistor controls how fast the C4 capacitor discharges. Now on its medium setting, the fan and motor will only spin for about half the time as it would on RV's highest setting. Finally, on its lowest setting, you pretty much need to hold the switch down for the fan and motor to continue spinning. Otherwise, it comes to a complete stop almost immediately. For the variation of this project, I've placed the C5 capacitor directly over the C4 one. Then when I turn on the slide switch and push the press switch, and note that the adjustable resistor is on its highest setting, the fan and motor spin much longer. That's because when connected in parallel, the two capacitors supply more energy to the phantom motor. And then like on the medium setting, it will run longer than in the previous project. However, on the lowest setting, the phantom motor will still only spin at full speed as long as you are holding the switch down. For high pitch bell, I am going to push the press switch and you hear a sound from the speaker that sounds like a very high pitch bell. This is an oscillator circuit. The red LED lights, but the lamp does not. For the variation of this project, Steamboat Whistle, I connected the C1 capacitor directly across the whistle chip, and now the sound resembles that of a steamboat whistle.
it's not very loud. A similar variation to this steam ship uses the C2 capacitor instead of the C1. And when I hold down the press switch, the circuit may produce what sounds like a steam ship, not a steam boat. Here is what I call a logic circuit. Specifically, this is called the light nor gate project. And with this type of circuit, the lamp is on when neither of the switches are. The lamp is, in other words, the lamp is on when neither the slide switch nor the press switch are on. But when I turn on either the slide switch or the press switch, the lamp goes out. And for example, if neither condition X nor condition Y are true in computer logic, then you would execute instruction Z. This is a noise activated burglar alarm. When I turn on the slide switch, you'll hear the sound of a machine gun. And after a short while, the sound will stop. then you would place the circuit in a room that you want to guard and if a thief was to come in and make a loud noise then the whistle chip will cause the circuit to activate. For the first variation of this project you would use the motor and connect one end of a long piece of string to its axis. Then you would connect the other end of the string to a door or a window so that if an intruder was to enter a room or area of your house that you wish to guard, they would likely pull the string and cause the motor to spin, turning on the alarm. Energy generated by turning the motor is what sets the alarm off. This is just an explanation for the second variant of this project because I couldn't get it to work for some reason. But ideally, you would place the photoresistor and then put the circuit in a dark room. Then, if an intruder was to turn on the lights, the alarm will sound because resistance will decrease as light hits the photoresistor and that might scare the thief away. For this project, when I turn on the slide switch and there is light shining on the photoresistor, the red LED lights up. However, when I cover the photoresistor with my hand, the LED turns off. That's because electrical resistance increases when the amount of light the photoresistor is exposed to decreases. This component is used in many real life applications such as street lamps and other outdoor lights to turn them on at night or in dark conditions and off during the day in bright conditions. After replacing the photoresistor with the microphone, I am going to blow on it and watch the red LED. You may notice it flickering. Blowing on the microphone changes its resistance, affecting the brightness of the LED. With the adjustable resistor set to the very far left, I'm going to turn on the slide switch and then tap the whistle chip. You hear some interesting sounds as the red LED also comes on. And the whistle chip has a piezo crystal between the two metal plates. And the sound causes the plates to vibrate and produce a small voltage, 
which is amplified by the U4 component here. And then you can place a small object at the center of the whistle chip. And when I remove the object, the speaker and LED are activated. This is a pretty interesting project to me. I replaced the whistle chip with the microphone and I disconnected the jumper wire so I could hold it away from the speaker and I am going to talk into it. Listen carefully to the speaker. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Goodbye. This is... You probably could hear my voice on the speaker. This is a perfect example of a real-life microphone, which would have an amplifier to make your voice louder. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the lamp, fan, and LED come on. The fan is currently spinning in a clockwise direction. The red LED is off. Now I'm going to turn off the slide switch and then hold down the press switch. Now the fan rotates in a counterclockwise direction and the lamp comes on, but all, now the green LED is off and the red LED is on. That's because the direction in which the fan is rotating determines which LED comes on. LEDs only allow current to flow in one direction, and that's why only one LED comes on at a time, while the lamp allows current to flow in both directions, and that's why it comes on when the motor is spinning in either direction. I'm going to turn on the slide switch, and you will hear Space Force sounds as the red LED comes on. When I cover the photoresistor, the sound will stop after a while. But ideally, when there is light on the photoresistor, the sound will continue because it's keeping the music integrated circuit, which in turn is controlling the space where I see activated. I can change the sound and reactivate the integrated circuit by holding down the press switch. I have to keep it held down though or else it will stop. But a new sound plays every time I press it. Pretty interesting. When I turn on the slide switch, you're going to hear a symphony of music and alarm sounds. That's why this is known as the sound mixer. The sounds from both integrated circuits are played at the same time. Even after the music stops, the alarm continues to sound. I'm going to push the press switch, and you can hear music from the speaker. The green LED also lights. Now, when I turn on the slide switch, then push the press switch again, you'll hear sound from both the music integrated circuit and the alarm integrated circuit, although it sounds distorted. But both LEDs light up and the fan spins. That's because the integrated circuits are both connected together and they drive the LEDs and motor.